We've swapped seats. This is so weird for us. <laughs> 90 Day Fiance, Before the 90 Days, Season 5, Episode 3, First Dates, Second Thoughts. So, first off, if you watch this later, we're binge watching all of these and I'm already exhausted. We're going to try to watch the new episode tonight and record. <laughs> because we've got to get Sister Wife, we've got to make sure that it gets all that stuff done. Anyway, things are heating up and becoming more and more of a mess. So one thing I forgot to mention about Gino and Jasmine is the voice. I, I don't know if I've ever been so horrified. When, you, when she's like, oh, I got a message from him. And he's like, who's my baby? Who's my baby? And I was like, oh, that's a whole level of thing I don't want to get into. And she well, is, in what's fact. What's that thing that, uh, oh my gosh. The guy that got fired on Bob's Burgers that he had the fetish of. Oh, the baby fetish, where they treat him like a baby? Yeah, that's a that's a deep, deep reference there. Anyway, he eats meat, she's a vegetarian. He's like, oh, I'm finally having some real Panamanian food, which is fries and chips, which I, I don't know. And then she's like, here's a plantain, and he acts like it's a, a plant. Well, I've had plantains. They're fine. They're great. I mean, just was the whole thing. And then she's like, you don't tip. And he's like, well, we tip. And she's like, oh, you have a thing for the waitress? And it was like a super awkward. And then he's like, then he opened this door, which is like, oh, who's Paul? She's like, oh, it's my friend Pauline. Do you want to see? Now you open up your phone. Let me go through and check this over. And it's a little bit like, uh, and he's like, I, I can't tell if she's kidding. She's not kidding. So then they go back to the room and he's like, I need to take my little blue pill. But I don't know. And then she like is like, get out of my way. I'm mad at you. I'm done talking to you. Super healthy interactions for their first day. And then he's just like, ah, ah. And then she shows up in a blue nightie and she's like, well, this is just my nightgown. Hmm. And then like him instead of being like, wow, you're so beautiful. You're amazing. Whatever that would normally happen. Instead, he's just like, ooh. And then he's like, she, oh, shoot. I don't have my diaper on. Don. <laughs> anyway. You're so funny. I crack my Anyway, up. it's the most awkward interaction. Like, I was embarrassed. Which is a, a really, I mean, all of this stuff is so cringe. It's so embarrassing. Anyway, she's like, do you want to cuddle? And he's like, fine. And he like crawls into bed. With his shoes on. Shoes on, his hat on. I get the hat thing. He doesn't want to be filmed without his hat on. That's clearly what that's about. I don't want to be filmed without my pants on. But like, and then the rest of it, and John's like... It's like, it's hard to tell how much of this is just that they have a camera, like, four feet away, and how much of this is just that this guy, this whole interaction is that awkward. Okay, on to Kim and Usman. She buys him flowers. A PlayStation 5. And a MacBook Pro. And a MacBook Pro. I'd be her, girl, I'd be her, her uh, boyfriend, too. Wouldn't you? You'd consider it. He's still referring to as a potential boyfriend. He's really getting on my nerves. I mean, this is no, the friends are getting on the nerves to me quite a bit because he's like, don't call her a super fan. They call her a super fan and then they're like, ooh, they know just what they're doing. Just own up to it. And, and it's just like. At least it's entertaining. Is it's it? More than I can say about the other people is on it, the show. Is it entertaining? Anyway, I was annoyed. I was annoyed on her, her behalf, which is like, I, th this is going to be. This is going to be enough of a train wreck without a heckle and jekyll back there making their dumb little comments the whole time. He's holding her hand, which is like, I don't hold hands with people that I'm not in some sort of relationship with. True. Um, so when he's holding her hand and they're calling her a super fan, I get it. They've, got, they've done this race before. I totally get that. But it annoyed me and I can't really say why. I mean, I said why. I've said why. I've explained why. Anyway, she's got the honeymoon suite. She wants him to come over. He comes over. She gives him lavish presents. And he's like kissing, <laughs> fondling it. And then he's like, but I'm out. I'm out. But then he like says stuff like, oh, I want to be tattooed on you. It's like, okay, if you were to literally just put one hand into like, like he's sending the most mixed signals. No, I don't. A butt. <laughs> what? Life got big squeezy. <laughs> what? So what I meant. We watch so much TV. If we put one hand into like good signals and bad signals, he's literally grabbing a handful of each and throwing them in her face. He's like 
holding her hand, singing to her, asking to be tattooed. And then he's like, oh, you're a potential. Then he says, like, she's better in person. I'm like, uh, oh, well, quite the compliment. Then tells her she looks 30, 32 or 30. She's a lovely woman. She doesn't look 32. I don't look 32. I think I look younger than her. I don't know. Just <laughs> anyway. Total, you know this is not going to end well because he is he is sending her all these signals, but to anyone who's not involved, it's so clear that he is not into her. He's just enjoying... I mean, the least you would think the manager... He's into that PlayStation, though. He is into that PlayStation. Yeah. Alana and Caleb, for a guy who packs three things of, of protein, protein powder. powder, he is sure a wimp about any amount of physical work. Oh, this is really hard. Because he carried luggage and her wheelchair, and eventually he did carry her... But it is a little bit, he's like, well, I've never thought about wheelchair accessibility. Okay, admittedly, most people don't if they don't use a wheelchair. But it does seem when you're meeting someone with a wheelchair, you could spend half a second thinking about it. He's only got a mind for <laughs> thinking about himself. So he already says right off, you're smaller than I thought. And I was like, oh, well, geez, Louise, what an opening line. Super conversation. He basically says... He said, you know, maybe once I get over her disability, there'll be some chemistry come back. So he's basically said there's no chemistry. The whole thing is like, buddy, I, I, just like, no thank you. This is not. Um, and then he pitches an absolute fit that Elijah had slept in the room the night before, which I would kind of get if he had showed, like if he was actually showing interest in her. But he doesn't seem that interested in her, but now he's going to be upset about Elijah. Her roommate, who I don't believe is interested in her. He, I'll leave it at that. I mean, he's Russian and we don't want to get anybody killed, but... Yeah, I I don't think that they're... I'll say this. You know I think that if they were going to date, they would have dated by now. They've been roommates for a bunch of years. He didn't seem to have a problem when they were roommates, so I anyway... Don't. And she needs help. Anyway, so then he does this whole thing about, like... <clears throat> She's like, are we friends? Are we not friends? Like, kind of like, what's going on? Because he's like, oh, well, did you cuddle with him? And she's like, do you cuddle with your friends? Like, as a counterpoint? And his answer is, yes, I do. And she's like, excuse me? Do you cuddle with a lot of your friends? He's like, yeah, I'm always like, you know. Which is not what he's even doing to her. And so she's like, well, am I just a friend then? And he's like, well, I would have come all this way if we were just friends. But I am mentally exhausted. You know, like... But it's like, it reminds me of the lesbians in, in Australia where they went and then girl was just like not affectionate, not affectionate, just kept having excuses and eventually it was pretty clear she just wasn't into it. That's how I feel about Kip. He is not into it, but he's going to like, he's going to kick that can down the line to deal with later. His little pea brain is so full right now. <laughs> anyway, then we cut over to Mike and Jimena in Colombia. She doesn't speak English. Um, she talks about, I mean, I do feel bad for her because she's a manicurist. She's got two kids. She basically got herself knocked up with a guy in prison <clears throat> because she loved him. Not basically. Exactly. Okay. okay, so she got, and then she says she loves him. She almost teared up, but now she's a man to take care of her. So she shows us the couch, the table, the stove, the fridge, the Kind of heartbreaking. The blender, the... Yeah, I mean, I feel I feel bad for her, and I feel bad for him, because she's like, I'm not really attracted to him. I like big guys, but he's nice. So this just seems like, this just seems, this is sad, because it does not seem like it's going well. I don't like those stories. I like ones where you feel like, like, if I'm going to watch people, it's going to be two people that you feel like are very competent adults, that's just going to be a train wreck. Because it's like, I wasn't enough train wreck dates to where I can watch other people's train wreck dates and not be... Like, I feel bad for Alana, but she has someone with her. She has other resources. She'll be fine. You know, we can all laugh about this. But I, this, I don't, I don't feel great about watching because I feel bad for them. Same goes for... Oh, I can't even get through the page. Um, Ella and Johnny. So, Ella, we're going to do Ella... I was not, when she got the sword, I was like, well, I'm not going to judge her as this being cringe because I shoot archery. But then she, like, started doing the cosplay thing, and I was a little bit more like, oof, this is a little cringe. Adorable house. I have nothing wrong with fantasy. I write fantasy novels, so I cannot judge anyone about fantasy stuff. So, like, go dragons, adorable house, um, all of that. But it really doesn't seem 
because we had seen the previews, I'm already a little tense that this Johnny guy is not even going to show up. It looks like it's pretty clear. So I always feel bad for her. She seems like a lovely person. She's really pretty. Um, uh, they're, and what's, what was, okay, so they're both using face filters. When they show us those pictures, you can tell that, like, it's all kind of blurry. Um, and so they're both sending each other face, and you can do that on Zoom now. Like, you can use, basically, Facetune on Zoom? videos. Yeah, on Zoom, there's a, a filter. I can, like, put lipstick on. I can, I can put that, a mustache. That's so 2010. Zoom? No, Skype is 2010. Zoom is all about the 2020, baby. Oh, you're right. Yeah, so they have filters on there and stuff, and I don't know if they're using that. I don't, I don't, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I Zoom for work, but I'm not, I'm not using the face filters and stuff. I'm going to be using the face filters for this if I was going to do it for anything. Yeah. Anyway, she seems really sweet. She says he wants to move to Idaho to work on a ranch. We worked on a ranch. It is not something you just pick up. You have to be pretty passionate. John did learn how to ride horses to work on a ranch, but John is exceptional, and he can do anything. From some jerks. <laughs> and you and you also wanted to, have always wanted to work on a ranch, loves working outside, all that. So this guy, the idea of this well, guy... I've always wanted to, but after I got there, it, it fit me pretty well. Anyway, so this whole idea that he's going to come and take over for the ranch kind of just makes me like a little bit like, oh, that's kind of rare... Um, and then, uh, we get the whole story about how, and this was, so she has very sweet friends who said all the same stuff I did, which was like, he's got a five-year-old and he's going to come, and he's saying he's going to come over for months away from his five-year-old. And I was like, and they were like, that's a huge red flag. And I was like, thank you. Thank you. Once again, family and friends are the best part of this show because they also were a little bit like, I don't think that's happening. That doesn't sound right. Um, she seems super sweet. Her mom's, you know, very sweet. She, she says this guy is going to help, come and help her lose weight, which is kind of a red flag to me. And then we get the, we get a lot of detail with her sex life. I do not want to hear that much about anyone's sex life. I don't want to, I don't want to, I, I don't want to. That's just the period. I don't want to hear that much about sex life. We, so we, we know whole... about the bush, his little pokey hides in. <laughs> <laughs> We gotta hear about her vibrators. We gotta hear the whole thing. Stuff nobody no. ever wanted to know. I don't even know any of that. Including her best friend from high school did not want to know that. She was a little bit like, like, what did I sign up for? Like, I thought I was gonna go on TV and talk to her, just kind of have an open conversation. I didn't know that I was gonna hear about his 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 pubic area hair and their sexting and how much he you know loves her bazoombas. And the whole shebang, all of, all of it. It was a lot. Anyway, it was like way too much. It was just, I thought the funniest thing was the best friend who's like, I did not know that. I didn't know that. Nope, didn't know that either. This is a whole new level to our friendship. Uh, and then last is um, Hamza and Memphis. Kickboxing is his passion. The sister, love the sister, love the mom. Mom is like, I have these concerns, but like brought beautiful roses. Apparently he is five years old though, because she makes all of his food, wakes him up, makes his bed. Did it sound like he had a job? I don't know if the kickboxing is a job. Does he work at the gym? But he didn't seem to do it. Um, he didn't mention a job. His sister speaks English, is beautiful, and is like has some real talk with him about what's going on. Like, <laughs> does... Does Memphis know that you, that mom does everything for you? Does Memphis, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I would like her to be on the show instead. Let's get her a guy who's not a total hot mess, which means they wouldn't ever be in the show. And then he's like, she's like, okay, she can stay in this room. Her, his family actually seems pretty welcoming. A lot of times they're really like American women are witches. Not untrue sometimes, but you know. Fair point. <laughs> I can't argue. But anyway. <laughs> she is a, he is a, <laughs> you okay oh. anyway anyway we're being awful anyway so he's like well I thought this is like I don't want to be there for that conversation where he tells his mom like I don't think it's a big deal if we have sex before marriage we were raised pretty conservative so <laughs> still I, don't talk to my mom about <laughs> sex <laughs> don't either hey, funny, funny story <laughs> John, I married John when I was 31, and I had a broken foot at the time when I got engaged. <laughs> and my mom, I was in a room, and my mom sat me down to have the talk at 31. <laughs> my crutches were across the room, and I was like, I'm going to go for it. She's like, good. It was really awkward. <coughs> I was like, I don't.
don't want to have this. <clears throat> Sometimes when you're married, a man likes to touch you. I'm like, oh my gosh, Mom, I can't do this. Anyway, that level of embarrassment is kind of what happened when he was like, oh Mom, because she was like, well, you don't have sex before marriage. And he's like, I'm a big boy now. I can have sex when I when two people are in love. And it was just very much like, you're going to have this conversation with your mom on national TV? I guess so. Maybe it doesn't air in Tunisia, so they're okay. They're like, somewhere in America, people are left. Anyway, <laughs> there we go. We're caught up at least for another hour and a half until the next episode airs. So we will see you later. Bye-bye.